Today, I've prepared a video on coital cephalgia, otherwise known as sexual headaches or orgasm headaches. Well, what is it? Coital cephalgia is a headache that presents during sexual intercourse. There are three types. The first type is a headache during intercourse, usually a dull ache, but generally not too bothersome. The second type is a thunderclap headache characterized by the sudden and painful onset at the start of or during an orgasm. And the third type is the very rare headache caused by low cerebral spinal fluid pressure. Today, we're going to discuss the second type. Maybe you or someone you know has complained about this before, but if not, that's okay too. There are several triggers for an orgasm headache, and if you find yourself on the receiving end of one, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor. Orgasm headaches can be totally benign, but they can also pose a real threat to your health. Someone experiencing an orgasm headache may exhibit additional discomforts, such as nausea and or vomiting. Studies have shown that coital cephalgia is very often associated with benign exertional headaches, or headaches that follow a period of physical exertion, such as vigorous exercise. Coital cephalgia may also be more prevalent in individuals with personal or familial history of migraines. It has also been found that life stress and fatigue can be major contributors to this type of headache. On the more serious side of the spectrum, Coital cephalgia can be indicative of an underlying condition, such as bacillar artery dissection, which will need to be treated by a physician. Should one need to be examined for this issue, a physician will likely focus on vascular pathology first. This may include artery dissection, or a tear in the lining of arteries that transmit blood to the brain, aneurysms, or the enlargement of an artery, or intracranial hemorrhage, which is active bleeding in the skull or brain. Initial tests may be followed by lab work and or the prescription of medications your doctor sees fit to treat any found issues. This ailment is rare, but made rarer still by the impression that it is embarrassing to talk about. This lack of communication has the potential to be harmless or dangerous, so please do not hesitate to bring it up to your doctor if you believe it's happening to you. Thanks for watching.